It's the word redemption. The word redemption. And I want to try and show you tonight that you are not just forgiven as a Christian. You are redeemed. And there is a world of difference between the two. And may the Lord bless his word. As we read it from 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 18. Knowing, Peter says, you've got to know this. And here's what it is. That you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. We're going to look at that. We're going to look into that. What that means. Foreordained before the foundation of the world. But was manifest in these last times for you. Who through him believe in God. Who raised him from the dead and gave him glory. So that your faith and hope are in God. And may the Lord bless what we have just read together and may it mean something to you right now, brothers and sisters. But we're looking at another great word from the Bible tonight. The word redemption. Redemption. As you read your Bible, you're going to come across this word a lot. You're going to see it on the pages of God's word. Redeemed. The redeemed redemption you're going to come across it an awful lot and that is because the primary work of god is to redeem us that's why it's used so often that's why it's one of those great great bible words because the primary purpose and reason for god is to redeem us. You know, there's a great significance in the titles of the Lord Jesus too. If, if you're looking for a Bible study, something to study in the Bible, study the titles of Jesus. There's so many of them and there's a real significance because those titles that are given to the Lord Jesus are for a reason too. And there's a significance in the titles that he bears. He's the Savior. We know that. Matthew 1 and 21 says that. You will call his name Jesus. He will save his people from their sin. He's the shepherd. We heard about that last Sunday morning. John 10 and 11 reminds us of that in the Gospels. He's also the master. And John 13 and verse 13 highlights that fact. And he's also our friend. Proverbs 18 and 24 says he's the friend who sticks closer than any brother. That's what we have in the Lord tonight. But you know something else? Over 3,000 years ago, a man called Job gave a wonderful testimony in which he spoke of the Lord in this way. He said these words, he's my redeemer. He's my redeemer. Listen to what Job said in Job chapter 19 and verse 25. For I know that my redeemer lives. And he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know that in my flesh I'm going to see God. And here's the point of that. In all of this man's trouble, and we know about the life of Job, he suffered more than any human ever did. But in the midst of all of that, there was one important thing that this man knew, and he kept saying it, I know, I know. And here's what he knew, there was a redeemer. And he said, I know my 
Redeemer lives. But what does that word Redeemer actually mean? Because we're looking at the great words of the Bible. This is a great one. Redemption or Redeemer or to be redeemed. But what does it mean? Well, the word redeem means to buy back. That's so important when we look at this. In the first place, it means to buy back, to purchase something that has been lost. It also means to set free, to liberate a setting free, a slave from slavery. And the word redeem also means to deliver from some great danger. Like with the children of Israel, time passed when God delivered them and actually redeemed them from Pharaoh and from the land of Egypt as well. But here's how it relates to us. When the Lord Jesus died on the cross, he redeemed us in this threefold way. He bought us back. Now you need to know this as a Christian. He bought you back. Because by nature, the Bible even says, you and I were sold under sin. I wonder did you know that in your default fleshly sinful state of mind too we were sold under sin paul knew that here's what paul said in romans 7 and verse 14 for we know that the law is spiritual but i am carnal sold under sin that's what paul said about himself that's my state that's my default state yeah, the law is spiritual, I know that, but I'm carnal. And I'm sold under sin. But Jesus died to pay. Now here's the truth. And it all relates to this word, redemption. He died to pay the ransom price to set us free. Of course, you go on and on in this. You follow the lineage and you follow it until the last words of the Lord Jesus on the cross. In our English translation, it is, it is finished. In the original manuscript, it's one word, telestes. Telestes, he said. And what that word means is this. His last words on the cross, pen in full. In our default state, we were sold under sin, but Jesus died the price for the ransom to set us free. And here's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19. You are bought with a price. That's for every Christian on planet earth tonight. Without exception, if you're a Christian, any Christian, they're bought with a price. And Paul really went out of his way to remind these believers who had all sorts of ideas in the ancient city of Corinth. He really went out of his way to remind them, don't forget this, he said. With all that's come on around you, you're different. You're bought with a price. And here's how he put it. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from God, now listen to this now, and you are not your own. Hands up who knows that, by the way. We've got to remind, I, I don't know if you're like me, but I've got to remind myself of that all the time. I'm not my own. I'm not my own. I'm not my own man. I'm not my own person. I can't do my own thing. I can't say my own thing. I'm not my own. Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, laid that down. You're not your own. For you are bought with a price. And what I was really saying to these believers is this. You're redeemed. Jesus paid the price for you. To set you free. And then they added this at the end. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Which are God's. But brothers and sisters right now. Don't miss that. Don't, whenever you do, miss what Paul laid down there. You're bought with a price. Don't miss that. 
The Lord has set us free from slavery and bondage as well. For by nature we were slaves of sin and Satan. The Lord Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 34, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. That resonates with so many of us because of what we were doing. And we couldn't stop doing it. And many of us, as we talked a few weeks ago, came under that great conviction of God. That's another great Bible word. But we came under that great conviction. But we couldn't break what we were doing. Thank the Lord he broke it for us. Thank the Lord he set us free. Thank the Lord for freedom today. As our Redeemer, he's also delivered us from great danger. For we face death and judgment and brothers and sisters remind ourselves tonight in a world that's forgotten us our destiny was hell but jesus died to deliver us aren't you glad you're redeemed today and you're glad he set you free delivered us from great danger this is what's involved in the word redemption this great Bible word. This is all that's in, there's so much involved in this. I, I gotta say this to you. This is a really special word. This is a really special understanding. We, we've got to understand this, and it will bless you if you can understand it. So to appreciate it, we have to look at just one or two things pertaining to it. And the first thing I want to highlight to you is the plan of our redemption. Because it was planned. It was planned. The plan of our redemption. In our reading we read about it. And what we're told is remarkable by the way. Because what we're told here is. That our redemption was planned by God. In eternity. Even before the world was. This, this, is, this is huge. I mean, listen to this. What we read a few minutes ago. Verse 18 of 1 Peter chapter 1. Knowing. Now, he highlights that Paul. You've you got to know this he says. And he's talking about redemption. The same way we are tonight. And he really wanted his, his hearers to know. And, and God wants us to know. Knowing. That you were not redeemed with corruptible things. Like silver and gold from your aimless conduct. Received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot now here's what he says next indeed he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you here we learn that before creation god had planned our redemption now, I know that that raises a huge amount of questions. That, that's the truth. That raises all sorts of questions. But ultimately, and I came to this today, ultimately, this shows how much we're thought of. Ultimately, this shows us how much God cares. And redemption tells us God has made a way for us when we couldn't even help ourselves. He took the initiative and it proves how much we're thought of and how much he cares. That's the plan of redemption. There was no way out, but God done something. You know, we're living in an age where critics say, okay, the pain and suffering in our world, the things that's gone on in our world. Why doesn't God do something? And they're missing the point. He already has. People say to me, oh, you're, you're a preacher of the gospel. You're a man of God, a man of the cloth oil. And it says years ago, and, and you hear, when I went to England, I thought I really got promoted. I went to England. They started calling me reverend when I got to England. <laughs> And in our bank, they changed our bank book, and I still have to this day, it says, the Reverend John Thompson. <laughs> I'm thinking, if my mom could see me now. <laughs> the, you know, and, and all of you are a man of the cloth, and you believe that you're a preacher of the gospel, and, and then comes the question, 
Why doesn't God do something in this world? Hey, he already has. He already has. He's stepped in. He's planned redemption. He's made a way. But there's only one way. And it's not your way or my way. It's his way. Jesus says, I am the way. The plan of, even before the foundation of the world, he planned that. It's incredible how much he cares, how much we're thought of tonight. But there, we also need, as we're looking into this, not just to see that in, in, in its sense, but there's a purpose to this as well. The purpose of our redemption. That's the heart of the little story I want to try and convey to you now. I hope this blesses you. I really hope this blesses you as a child of God. The purpose of your redemption. You see, God has a great purpose behind it all. What objective did God have in view when he planned redemption when Jesus came to redeem us? What's the purpose in that essentially? Well, we know this much that God has many purposes. He really does. But ultimately, ultimately, and I believe this with everything I've got about Him. Ultimately, God has many purposes, but ultimately, He wants to be with us. Honestly, brothers and sisters, I am convinced with every fiber of my being that's the heart of God more than anything else. He wants to be with you. And He wants you to be with Him forevermore. I believe that starts in the book of Genesis and ends in the book of Revelation. I believe you see that right at the beginning because the Bible tells us something significant with all that's going on in the first three chapters of Genesis, of creation and the fall and what took place and all of that. There's something in the heart of that that really portrays to us the heart of God. And here's what it says, that God walked with Adam in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam, the first man, walked with God in that perfect fellowship. And they enjoyed that. And I'll tell you how, that, how powerful that is and, and, and how that means so much to the Lord because that was broken by sin. That perfect communion was destroyed by sin. With Adam and his wife Eve, they believed the lie and went with it. And that was broken. But God responded by asking the first question that God ever asked in the Bible. You know what that question was? Where are you? God, Adam wasn't there anymore. He, he was ashamed. He felt guilty and he felt naked and, and ashamed and he couldn't even look at God or come near. And, and God cried out, where are you, Adam? Where are you? I believe that just highlights the longing of his heart. He wants to be with us. That's the ultimate purpose of God. He wants you to be with him. And he wants you to be with him. Yes, through every hour of your life now, and you'll live it, and, and, and one day it'll be over, and, and who knows when that will be, or, or anything like that, but he wants to be with you every step of the way, every good day, every bad day, every in-between day, every difficult day, every challenging day, every confusing day. He wants to be with you, but not just then. He wants you to be with him forever. You can see that with the command he gave to Moses. He, it is what God said to Moses. You come out of Genesis and into Exodus, and God says, I want you to make me a tent, a tabernacle. And, and it's an amazing study, the tabernacle of Moses, the tabernacle in the wilderness. It's incredible the detail that God put in that. And, and, and maybe one time we'll look at that because that just for 
figures, the Lord Jesus, even the, the apparatus in the, the, the tabernacle, the brazen laver, the brazen altar, um, the, the, the golden lampstand. Do you know that those pieces of apparatus in the tabernacle were set out in the image of the cross? Did you know in that tabernacle there's only one way in? There's no back door. Do you know the, 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 the curtains in that signify the Lord Jesus' colors? White fine linen depicting his sinlessness, scarlet depicting his precious blood. It's, it all speaks of Jesus. And, and, and then you come through and you come into the holy place, the outer court, and it's amazing what goes on there. And then you come into the holy place, and then you come into another place, but you couldn't come into it. Only the high priest could come in once a year. And that's called the holy of holies. And the whole purpose of that tent was this. God said to Moses, I want you to make me a tabernacle. And here's what he said next that I will dwell among you. And in that holy of holies, the ark of the covenant, God said this, I'll meet with you there. I'll meet with you there. Where? The mercy seat. You read in the New Testament how Paul actually called the Lord Jesus our mercy seat. And God meets with us in heaven. Because Jesus came to redeem us. Do you know what the ultimate purpose of your redemption is? God wants to be with you. And God wants you for himself. There's a man called Hosea. And God says, Hosea, I'm going to make you. He's a prophet. And God says to Hosea, I'm going to make you an object lesson. Do you know what we do with kids? We do with kids talks, you know about this. You do object lessons, get little pieces of twig or I've done all sorts of gloves and all sorts of stuff to teach the kids. Object lessons. And God said to Hosea, I'm going to make you an object lesson. And I'm going to show in your life what the people are doing to me. And he says to this man, this prophet Hosea, I want you to marry a woman. Her name is Gomar. I want you to take her, and I want you to take her as your wife. And Hosea will bed that, and he married this woman, he fell in love with her. But this woman became unfaithful, like the people of God were doing to him. It was all being shown out through this relationship. And Gomar left the house one day, and she went after another man. She pled the heart, and she ended up in the slave market. She was sold in slavery. But Hosea, we're told in the book of Hosea, chapter 3, he went to that place. And here's what he done. He redeemed her. I want to remind you tonight, brothers and sisters, we're living in the world. You know what it is? It's the slave market of sin. But Jesus came to them. To redeem us. And here's what Hosea says in Hosea chapter 3 and verse number 2. He went to that place. Here's what he says. So I bought her for myself. You've got to get that. You've got to get that. You've got to go home with that. that. That's the key to this. That's the special element here. That's what you have to go home with tonight. That's the picture God wanted you to see. Even with Hosea, the prophet, all those years ago, he goes to that slave market of sin, and he was a danger. But here's why he put it. I bought her for myself. Do you know why God redeemed you? For himself. I bought her for myself. Can you get that? For 15 shekels of silver and one and a half homers of barley. And I said to her, you shall stay with me. Many days you shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man. So too will I be toward you. He redeemed her, but he done it for himself. And then you'll remember the, one of the greatest love stories of all time in the book of Ruth. When Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi, had lost everything, they come across a man called Boaz. 
And Boaz became something to Ruth, essentially, but also to Naomi. He became their kinsman redeemer. And that man, Boaz, paid for everything those two people had lost. He paid and restored through all that they had lost. He bought it back again. He became their kinsman redeemer. But Boaz, and here's the key again, he entered into a relationship with Ruth that lasted for the rest of their lives. You see, he wanted her for himself. And by the way, through that relationship, through that lineage, came the Lord Jesus. Because they had a son called Obed. It's not a great word, by the way. Obed, I love you. <laughs> and the first time I read that, 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 that was Ruth and Boaz's son, Obed. I thought, I can really understand that. What a name. Obed, Obed, I love you. I used to say that years ago. Obed, I love you. Obed was the, the father of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David. And through King David came the Lord Jesus Christ, the greatest redeemer of all. Don't miss that point about redemption, brothers and sisters. The reason why he's redeemed us is for himself. I'm only in, but there's a great difference between forgiveness and redemption. Forgiveness is general, but redemption is personal. Forgiveness says go. You're forgiven. I forgive you. Go. Get on with your life. You're all right. I forgive you. Go. Away you go. You're free. Go. Go your way. I, I, I'll let you go. You're off the hook. Have your life. Enjoy it. Just go. But redemption says something more. Redemption says come. Yes. That's the difference between forgiveness and redemption. Forgiveness says go, you're off the hook, I you, I'll let you off the hook. Forgive me, go, make it all. Thanks very much, you can't thank me enough for it. And the way I'm going my life, that's forgiveness. But redemption is different. Redemption doesn't say go, redemption says come. I want you for myself. And I want to remind you as a Christian right now, you are more than forgiven, you're redeemed. You're more than forgiven. What the Lord's done for you is more than forgiveness. And listen, it's more than justification. We're going to look at these great words, justification and, and, and sanctification. It's more than that. You're redeemed. And not only that, you're adopted into the family of God. That's what it means to be redeemed. Isn't it great to be redeemed to me? The price of it, two minutes, the price of our redemption, well, we're told in our original reading, with the precious blood of Jesus. Do you ever wonder why the Bible talks about the blood of Christ? you know why that is? Well, the Bible says itself, the life is in the blood. Leviticus 17 and verse 11 says, for the life is in the blood. And Jesus' blood spoke of everything he had. For when he bled, he bled on that cross, he gave everything he had. When you bleed for someone, you're really showing how much they mean to you. But Jesus' blood was also precious. It was royal and it was spotless. That's why it says, but with the precious blood of Jesus, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. Jesus came as the lamb of God, the sacrificial lamb, the spotless lamb, but the liberating lamb. And when he laid down his life, the power that was in that sacrifice. Now, I want to end by saying this. When he laid down his life, the power was, that was in that sacrifice set man free. Come on, let's give him the glory. Set man free. And brothers and sisters to me, that's what it means to be redeemed. Love grew where the blood fell. Bonds of hope sprang up for men in misery. Listen, sin died where the blood fell. I'm so glad his precious blood has covered me. Aren't you? Are you glad you're with me? You're glad you're the one for you. All brothers and sisters, you're more than forgiven. You're with me. You're more than forgiven. The Lord's done so much more for us tonight. And here's what the Bible says to you. Let the redeemed of the Lord see. Come tell others about this. Come tell.
testify about this. Let's bow our head for a minute, because I know we're going to worship and we're looking forward to that. But Lord, for what you've done for us, we just, there are no words. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your great plan. And even more than that, the, the purpose of it, it, it's your heart to be with us, and for us to be with you forever and ever and forevermore. Yes. And Lord, right now, thank you for paying the price. There's no other commodity than the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you for shedding it and offering yourself. We love you right now. We're going to worship you right now. Receive it from our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a
Everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you.